serial entrepreneur, founder and GM of my case, the death of the office. Take it away, Matt. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Spiegel. I'm a lawyer, started a law firm, had an idea for a tech company, and now I'm just a tech entrepreneur running my case. So someone like me, the word disruption conjures up all sorts of magical ideas. To me, the word disruption means new products, innovation, and breaking old habits. Disruption is defined as an act of interrupting the continuity. So basically what you have is a course of action that's been steadily going along its course for a period of time, and then out of nowhere something comes along and throws that course of action into complete chaos. And when the dust is settled and chaos subsided, you're left doing things in a completely different way than you had done them before. This is disruption, and it can be a beautiful thing so long as you're on the right side of it. And not too long ago, Blockbuster was the leader in a massive movie rental industry. They were a behemoth in the space, synonymous with movie rental an immovable force that really could only be annoyed by local rental companies and the occasional would-be national challenger. In 2008, Blockbuster was doing just over $5 billion in revenue. Compare that to Netflix, a relative startup at the time, doing just over $1 billion. And then, astonishingly, just two years later, Netflix had doubled its revenue and was doing over $2.2 billion. And Blockbuster, well... Let's just say that a bankruptcy attorney was really not an expense that Blockbuster had anticipated just five years earlier. Okay, so everyone just stops renting movies and Blockbuster goes belly up, right? Not so much. In fact, the movie rental industry is booming. It's just been completely disrupted and the face of the industry has changed. It has changed significantly and for good. So what changed? Netflix and Blockbuster sold the exact same thing. So what was so different about one that caused one to thrive and disrupt an entire industry and the other to virtually go out of business? The answer is simple. It's method of delivery. Netflix sold the same commodity that Blockbuster sold. The difference was that Netflix delivered its service through the web. Blockbuster was a good old-fashioned brick-and-mortar operation. And this day and age, the web beats brick and mortar almost every single time and in almost every single instance. Now, this idea of taking a standard known commodity and changing its method of delivery has been the catalyst for disruption in dozens of industries. I mean, let's take a look at one of the most obvious, email. Email was a completely disruptive technology that was based solely on the idea of changing the delivery method of a standard and known commodity, the US mail. We as lawyers sell a commodity. We sell our legal services to the consumers, our clients. It's our time, expertise, education, and experience that we take as our service, we slap a price on it, and we sell it to the public. At the end of the day, we are a service that people pay for in the exact same way that they pay for movie rentals. Now, for as long as we can remember, the method of delivery for our service has remained the same. It's been ingrained as a fabric of the legal profession and it has really become more of a stereotype than anything else, the office. Our profession, we, we, are, we are expected to have the level of professionalism that is synonymous with going up to the penthouse level of some grandiose building, sitting down at some, in some ostentatious office at a desk with a lawyer surrounded by leather-bound books and fountain pens. Or are we? In the legal industry, our beloved trade, is experiencing a massive disruption right before our very eyes. And it is a disruption that is deep, all-encompassing, and will change the very fabric of the legal profession forever. And it's all about method of delivery. The delivery of services via the web is causing an incredible shift in an industry that typically has been impervious to technological and social changes. But as we sit here today, a room full of lawyers, it's relatively safe to assume that all of us have lost more than a few clients to online legal service vendors, the likes of LegalZoom and Rocket Lawyer. And these companies aren't going away. In fact, they're just going to get bigger. They're going to provide bigger in depth and reach, providing more services to more people. But there's a big difference between what we offer and the services that LegalZoom and Rocket Lawyer offer. We are more than just a boilerplate document. We are more than just putting your personal information into the computer and having a will spit out for you. Our value is us. It is the experience that a simple web form cannot give. 
It's our time, our counsel, our advice, our creativity that makes us more valuable than some click and fill website. Now, I don't, you know, so what can we do? What, what can we do to stay on the right side of disruption? Now, I don't have the silver bullet here, but what I can tell you is to get creative. The office is dead. Embrace the idea of the web and the ability to deliver services through technological means. If we don't get away from the idea that we can only advise a client by them coming into our office, then we are destined to fail and be completely trampled up by the technological herd that is running us down. However, if we do embrace these changes and, and get creative, we can actually beat Rocket Lawyer and LegalZoom at their own game. We can offer exactly what they offer, but with the added benefit of us and all the time and experience that goes along with it. Who is to say that I cannot zealously and competently represent someone accused of a DUI in California without them ever coming into my office? Now, while I know this idea seems extreme and counterintuitive, but I really ask you to think about it and give me one good reason why it won't work. Now, whether you decide to adopt the, take this idea of a virtual office to the next level or not, we are experiencing massive disruption, and we are in danger of becoming virtually extinct should we not adapt. As I stand before you today, I have processes being implemented at my law firm in San Diego that are geared towards giving services solely online. And trust me that if I can do it, then everybody in this room absolutely can as well. I just ask you to keep one question in mind when you're deciding whether to, to embark down this disruptive endeavor. Do you want to be Blockbuster or do you want to be Netflix? Thank you. Thank you.